Hello everyone and welcome to the Fictitious Dark, where we explore the line between the truth and the fictitious. I'm Josiah and I'm here with my co-hosts. I'm Rick. I'm Brandon. And today we have a very special reading for you. We are reading a very classic creepypasta, but still somewhat uh, underrated. We are going to be reading The Russian Sleep Experiments. Uh, we're going to delve in to see how, how this goes. So... I will Do you be... guys know anything about these uh, this Russian sleep experiment before we get into it? Absolutely, um, this is one of my one of my favorite creepy pastas from back in the day because it it wasn't as over the top as say Jeff the Killer. Yeah, I know <laughs> absolutely ass about any creepy pasta, so any Good. new creepy pasta is new to me. So, what exactly is a creepy pasta, Josiah? A creepy pasta is kind of like the internet's version of cryptid stories. It's it's almost like a a folklore being developed in the depths of the internet. Um, some of them are you know they can be submitted, they can be created by anyone. There's no <laughs> there's no barrier to entry. Some of them can be really good, and some of them can be really bad, and some of them. Uh, are in the middle, but they're iconic enough that they they catch on and become a big deal. Um, that's probably the best way I would put it. Is it's like modern internet folklore. The back rooms is an example. Uh, it originated on message boards. Um, Perfect. Awesome. Well, we can't wait to hear yeah. or read. I should say read. the story. Yeah. What, what's funny is I I do recall. With not knowing what the Russian, not knowing what creepy pasta was when I was like younger, or at least not understanding it, I remember hearing the title of the Russian sleep experiment and then like seeing the photo that's mm -hmm. associated with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, I thought that it was like, I, I had my doubts on the picture being real, but I just thought, oh, that's like based on without ever actually reading the story, I was like, oh, I guess they did some sort of sleep experiments and like things got crazy. Well, of course, I, I assumed you know, it was real. Of course, yeah. there's plenty of experiments we now know. MK Ultra. There's a, there's so many things that the CIA and the KGB and all these other uh, organizations have done that it. This is why it's one of my favorites because it sounds like it could be real. Um, mm -hmm. No, yeah, exactly. And then, uh, just to make sure we're clear, uh, Rick, have you looked at the photo that's associated yeah. with it? I've seen the photo over the years, but. And it's been associated with the Russian sleep experiment. It's just that I've never read any creepy pasta at all, mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. The thing I love about the photo is it is like it's right on that line of like that's fake, and then like being like really real looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right so on that. It's edge. like yeah, so it's like it's kind of like teetering with the fakeness just because it's so extreme looking. Yeah. Uh, but then it's like it does look good. Like it looks real though. They and did so a very like, good job with the black and white of the photo. Yeah. So yeah. it makes you question of like, wait, is that actually real? Which is definitely pretty cool about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I thought this would be a good one to start out with. So um for our first uh actually technically Jagged Janus was a creepy pasta, I believe. Uh, in some yeah, form, uh, it, uh, we we read it off of the no sleep, and so I think that yeah. might have just been somebody uh kind of doing their own thing it's essentially in spirit it is a creepypasta idea it's kind of how so. you decide to classify it but um i yeah. i will believe i will take point to start this and we'll just kind of go around and uh if you guys have any thoughts or comments feel free to jump in and uh, uh let's uh, see what this thing's all about it's been a good 15 years i think maybe probably maybe like more like 10 years since i've read this probably <laughs> so <clears throat> the russian sleep experiment Russian researchers in the late 1940s kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas-based stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed-circuit cameras, so they had only microphones and five-inch thick glass porthole-sized windows into the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books and cots to sleep on, but no bedding, as well as running water, a toilet, and enough dried food to last all five for over a month. The test subjects were political prisoners, deemed enemies of the state during World War II. 
interesting start so far. Mm -hmm. Immediately, I'll we continue. have this kind of credible, credible idea. Uh, we yeah. have political prisoners. Why not do something weird with them? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Because that's you know, definitely something that's been done since like the beginning of time. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely, it's interesting that you know they went with the idea of sleep deprivation, mm -hmm. you know, as a form of torture or so an I experiment. Think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like what does happen exactly? Well, let me ask you guys: uh, what's the longest you've ever stayed up? Um, two days. Mm -hmm. What about you, Brandon? Yeah. Like like straight without any naps. I know for sure, like probably like at least thirty hours. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever made the full forty eight. But I mean like I know for like a lot of people, like they, they've talked about like I just, I started hearing things, you know. Yeah. I started like I seeing things, you know, I I've had moments of being super tired where it's like you're sitting there and it's like you all you like you're awake. But you're all of a sudden dreaming, mm -hmm. like yeah. while being awake. Like it's like just for like a second. It's like, wait, I thought that was just happening. Oh, I I must have dozed off for like a exactly. split second. You know. I, what about you, Josiah? I think my max without naps is, I think I hit forty, and then I, and then I I might have taken like a five minute nap after mm -hmm. about thirty two hours, and then I got to forty, and then I I crashed. So yeah. Mine was give or take around like that forty to forty five hour range. Um, I just remember getting yeah. to a point where I was so tired that I couldn't fall asleep. No, no, yeah, sorry. So let me. No, now that I remember, it was it was about fifty. It was about fifty hours. Then I died. That's crazy. 50. Mm -hmm. Damn. So it was it was about two days. So this is like a what we're reading is just josiah like, <laughs> you're in this God. um no yeah that's crazy yeah i have experienced the whole like not being able to sleep it's like because your body is just like mm -hmm. it's go time yeah. like it's we're on survival mode adrenaline and all that kind of stuff so that when it's actually time to sleep it's like your body doesn't believe you at first mm -hmm. yeah it's like well this time should have been like three days ago you know <laughs> so yeah, I remember I tried to like read stuff. I tried to like watch boring shows. So I could try to fall asleep, but I just couldn't because I had to work a night shift the night before, and the night shift was from like uh, midnight to eight a.m. and I was just up after that, and then couldn't fall asleep, and then I had to work that shift again, you know, the next night. So by the time it was like already like nine o'clock, and I was like, well, I can't really fall asleep anymore. So hmm. I stayed up for that, and I just couldn't fall asleep mm -hmm. anymore. Dang, yeah, that yeah. sucks. I uh, I take my sleep very seriously, and I it's just it's one of those finer things in life. I will get mad if my sleep is truly affected to like that extreme. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Same here. Uh, yeah. What's next, Rick? Well, we'll find out. Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained, having been promised falsely that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. Their conversations and activities were monitored, and it was noted that they continued to talk about the increasingly traumatic incidents in their past. The general tone of their conversation took on a darker aspect after the four-day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and events that led them led them to where they were and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternate alternatingly alternately whispering into the microphones and one way mirrored portholes. Oddly, they seemed to think they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades, the subjects in captivity with them. At first, the researchers suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. After nine days, the first of them started screaming. He ran the length of the chamber repeatedly, yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight, at which point he continued attempting to scream, but was only able to produce additional squeaks. 
The researchers postulated that he had physically torn his vocal cords. The most surprising thing about this behavior was how the other captives reacted to it, or rather, didn't react to it. They continued whispering into the microphones until the second of the captives started to scream. The two non-screaming captives took the books apart, smeared page after page with their own feces, and pasted them calmly over the glass portholes. The screaming promptly stopped. So did the whispering into the microphones. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. But uh, all of a sudden took a little bit of an escalation there. Yeah. <laughs> It makes you think it's like almost like kind of some kind of metamorphosis that they're undertaking in like the last like paragraph. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. Right. After three more days passed, the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working. Since they thought it was impossible that no sound could be occurring with five people inside, the oxygen consumption in the chamber indicated that all five must still be alive. In fact, it was the amount of oxygen five people would consume at a very heavy level of strenuous exercise. Mm. Mm. On the morning of the 14th day, the researchers did something they said would not do, they would not do to get a reaction from the captives. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to provoke any response from the people they were afraid were either dead or vegetables. They announced... We are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom. To their surprise, they had heard a calm voice respond in a single phrase. We no longer want to be freed. Mm -hmm. Debate broke out among the researchers and the military forces funding the research unable to provoke any more response using the intercom. It was finally decided to open up the chamber at midnight on the 15th day. The chamber was flushed of the stimulant gas and filled with fresh air. And immediately, voices from the microphones began to object. Three different voices began begging, as if pleading for the life of loved ones, to turn the gas back on. The chamber was opened, and soldiers were sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever, and so did the soldiers when they saw what was inside. It's like almost they got like some kind of like chemical dependency on the gas. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. The the whole like you know you got people ratting on each other and doing all this <laughs> stuff just, uh, and then all of a sudden they just take this turn, and you aren't able to monitor them and you have no idea what's going on and then they just respond with something completely <laughs> out of character like yeah that's creepy as hell uh, yeah. we no longer want to be freed like well, it's, why it's, would you not want that it's like the yeah. the, the idea of the catch-22 and that novel the whole point was that uh someone who wants to get a mental health checkup so they can't fly well you are sane for not wanting to fly the suicidal mission so you're good to pilot. But the insane people never ask for the checkup because they're insane. So they will just keep flying. So you can't get out of yeah. it, you know. Mm, so when yeah. when they say like we no longer want to be freed, it's like, oh, who someone sane would want to get out of here. So what's going on, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Interesting. Um It's 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 pretty creepy so far. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. I'll continue. Four of the five subjects were still alive, although no one could rightly call the state that any of them in life. The food rations past five days had not been so much as touched. There were chunks of meat from the dead test subjects, thighs and chests stuffed into the drain in the center of the chamber, blocking it and allowing four inches of water to accumulate on the floor. Precisely, much of the water on the floor was actually blood was never determined. All four surviving test subjects also had large portions of muscle and skin torn away from their bodies. The destruction of flesh and exposed bone on their fingertips indicated that the wounds were inflicted by hand, not with teeth as the researchers initially thought. 
Closer examination of the position and angles of the wounds indicated that most, if not all of them, were self-inflicted. Ooh. Oh. Mm. A little gnarly. Yeah. Um, the abominal, <laughs> abdominal organs below the rib cage of all four test subjects had been removed, while the heart, lungs, and diaphragm remained in place. The skin and most of the muscles attached to the ribs had been ripped off, exposing the lungs through the rib cage. All the blood vessels and organs remained intact, but had been taken out and laid on the floor, fanning out around the eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects. The digestive tract of all four could be seen working, digesting food. It quickly became apparent that they were digesting what... What they were digesting was their own flesh that they had ripped off and eaten over the course of days. That, yeah, there's this combination of um, <laughs> of this of this the 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 thing now is there's this combination of self harm that seems very rabid, very um unhinged, but then this very clinical orderly placing of the other body parts from the inside. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's like they're exposing the core of themselves and then uh, almost like self-dissecting in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they're evaluating themselves, right? Yeah. Well, that's like... What a what a gross, crazy, but kind of cool idea of mm -hmm. like organs outside of your body, but they're still working properly. Mm -hmm. Like... Ooh, that's well, just, that's crazy. yeah, I think I'm not sure exactly how it works, but again, uh, we know that if you are if you are disemboweled in some cases, you can put the intestines back in, and they're gonna you're gonna have some oh, problems, yeah. but they'll work. It's kind of yeah, weird, yeah. like that. Um, yeah, which is like, uh, yeah, terrible. <laughs> just so nasty to think about. <clears throat> just imagine being a soldier and just walking in and seeing something like that. Like you know, yeah. you're not used to seeing anything. Well. Being a soldier in you know time of war, you've probably seen something close to that, but not something like of this nature where like it's mm -hmm. almost like organized self in self inflicted harm. You know. Yeah, exactly. Speaking yeah. of the soldiers, <clears throat> most of the soldiers were Russian special operatives at the facility, but still, many refused to return to the chamber to remove the test subjects. The subjects themselves continued to scream to be left in the chamber and begged and demanded that the gas be turned back on lest they fall asleep. Ooh. To everyone's surprise, the test subjects put a fierce fight in the process of being removed from the chamber. One of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat ripped out and another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off and an cool. artery in his leg severed by one of the subject's teeth. Another five of the soldiers lost their lives. If you count the ones that committed suicide in the weeks following, following the incident. So mm. there's something in the gas that, that they must have experienced or saw or felt that was almost kind of like an addiction to like a drug that, you know, they wanted to be subjected to it more and more. Mm -hmm. Like it was almost maybe like helping like take away some of like the uh maybe anxiety or initial like torment and torture of you know the actual experiment mm -hmm. yeah and like i do like how it's like the way it's laid out are like little logs even though it's not yeah like it's not um, formatted like a log necessarily. It is told like a log though, where it's just like you have this this time and it's like so much just happened and you put it in like a couple sentences. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like, oh my God, that just leaves so much room to the imagination. And uh, it's a pretty cool little style. The pacing uh, is also very quick. Yeah, oh. very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got suicide, uh, freaking ripping testicles off and <laughs> and biting people's arteries like 
you got full on like just like oh they're doing these crazy disgusting things to themselves oh no they're attacking people and it's like oh my god like yeah and the crazy part is they still have the strength to fend off the soldiers you know it's like where are they getting like this like almost like mm -hmm. supernatural strength of you know mm -hmm. Of them disemboweling, disbo yeah. disemboweling themselves, you know, taking out their organs and taking chunks out of their body, but yet still have the strength to, you know, fight off soldiers and attack them. Yeah, it kind of like makes me think of like, uh, like almost like Dead Space, where you have the markers, and then yeah. Doom, where you have hell energy, mm. where it's like, it's this like actual thing. An energy source because it's kind of like the loki the same thing uh, with both those stories where uh there's a practical means to use it for an energy source but there's these supernatural demonic properties about it uh that you just kind of don't understand and so mm -hmm. it's like the the gas it's like is it the gas doing it or is it the actual act of being awake that long? Are they blurring the lines between our reality and the next, you know? And like, is <laughs> that how it's working? Or is it, you know, is it the gas that is the supernatural thing? That's the question, I guess. But I don't know. Pretty cool. Um, in the struggle, one of the four living subjects had his spleen ruptured and bled out almost immediately. See, like a sentence and another person's dead. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> medical, <laughs> yeah, the medical researchers attempted to sedate him, but this proved impossible. He was injected with more than 10 times the human dose of a morphine uh, derivative and still fought like a cornered animal, breaking the ribs and arm of one doctor. His heart was seen to beat for a full two minutes after he had bled out, to the point where he was more air in his ve uh, vascular system than blood. Even after it stopped, he continued to scream and flail for another three minutes struggling to attack anyone in reach and just repeating the word more over and over weaker and weaker until he finally fell silent. Mm. So it does seem like the gas itself is something with a little bit of the demonic properties potentially. Yeah. Um, the surviving three test subjects were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility. The two with intact vocal cords continuously begging for the gas, demanding to be kept awake. I like I like that little note there. Of yeah. The two with the intact vocal cords. I think <laughs> like, I th oh what? <laughs> I think that's the thing I really love about this is that it's it's said so plainly. It gives you like times like he flailed for three minutes. Like it gives you these mm -hmm. definite like times like someone's like logging it down, but there's these horrific things, and it's so simplistic in how it presents it to you. But yeah, just the little details like yeah, the two with intact vocal cords because the others screamed until they they uh, tore them. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's I'm getting kind of like almost like a uh, zombie vibes from Call of Duty, mm -hmm. you know, in a sense. It mm -hmm. seems like. You you could definitely play the Call of Duty zombie noises over over this, like in the background. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> Fetch like, me your soul. <laughs> another thing I was thinking is like bye, it's bye. almost like dead. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're cool. It's like the, almost like the whole idea of them being awake. They're able to like almost uh, you know, see like almost like a new. Like, they're welcomed into, like, this new existence and new, like, you know, being, in a sense, you know, that normally that, like, none of us would ever be able to experience because, you know, we're not going to be awake that long. Mm -hmm. And if we are, we probably wouldn't be the most, you know, sane person after this. It's almost like they're able to see, you know, like, almost a new dimension of the world, which, you know made them, you know, change their form in a sense. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, like one thing um, that also kind of makes me think of is uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, uh, especially like the remake, which I know everybody hates it. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. But one, one thing that was in there that I think was actually pretty cool was when they were staying awake for so long that it was like the dream world was bleeding into their being awake. It's like... I, I'm awake, but he's just, like, so tired that it's, like, it's just starting to, like, mesh together. And then he's starting to see things and starting to, and Freddy's able to, like, get him while he's awake. And, like, uh, it just makes me think of that a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that's me. Yeah. <laughs> the most Maybe in... So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most injured of the three was taken to the only surgical operating room that the facility had. In the process of preparing the subject to have his organs placed back within his body, it was found he was effectively immune to the sedative they had given him to prepare him for the surgery. He fought furiously against his restraints when the anesthetic gas was brought out to put him under. He managed to tear most of the way through a four-inch wide leather strap on one wrist, even though the weight of a 200-pound soldier holding that wrist. It took only a little more anesthetic than normal to put him under, and the instant his eyelids fluttered and closed, his heart stopped. Oh. Jeez, it's almost like the the sleep de deprivation was the one thing that the started keeping him alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they passed the point, so they have to stay awake now, yeah. Yeah. If they, if you surpass, yeah. if you surpass that that law placed on you, you know that yeah. biological law. Yeah, so it, exactly. It totally makes sense why they would be fighting for their lives with this, you know, unnatural strength to, you know, stay alive and stay in the chamber because maybe they knew that if they ever went to sleep, they would die. So. Yeah, good point. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a uh, maybe. Uh the act of actually falling asleep would be worse than anything that they're already doing to themselves. Yeah. It was meant like their survival instinct kicking in. Yeah, exactly. In the autopsy of the test subject that died on the operating table, it was found that his blood had to triple the normal level of oxygen. The muscles that were still attached to his skeleton were badly torn and he had nine he had broken nine bones in the struggle to not be subdued. Most of them were from the force of his own muscles had exerted on them. Yeah, that's interesting because it's like there's this force inside him that is greater than th his own physical form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is it's like, almost like he's grown in strength and his own skeleton cannot, you know, you know, um, handle the like the absolute force his muscles can exert mm -hmm. it's almost like the idea of putting an engine in a car you know that's not tuned for that engine and it just tears like the you know the you know body apart tears the you know the transmission mm -hmm. you know the back end and everything of it it's kind of like almost that same idea yeah that's actually a really good analogy of uh it's the body is not tuned to yeah. uh to the engine yeah that's the body is not tuned to the new spirit that's residing within it exactly it's almost got like replaced in a sense or maybe in a sense upgraded like you know an engine would if you mm, put a new yeah. engine in a car yeah i mean yeah it's like what if their uh their souls or spirits or whatever traveled to a different dimension and changed and came back and uh, it's like the physical form is not yeah. meshing well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Kind of cool to like, you know, think about, but mm -hmm. it's free. Oh, yeah, free for free. sure. <laughs> the second survivor had been the first of the group of five to start screaming. His vocal cords destroyed. He was unable to beg or object to surgery. And he only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval when the anesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his head yes when someone suggested, reluctantly, that they should try the surgery without anesthetic. 
Ooh. Yeah, that's just <laughs> that's honestly that's terrifying. You have this like freak on the table, and it's just like, oh, he's freaking out. Like, what do we? Should we try to do it without it? He's like, yeah, <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> it's like it's like the kid uh, meme, like yeah. <laughs> he gets hit in the head with the ball like they become like a glutton for punishment they just want it you know yeah yeah that's nasty um and he did not react for the entire six hour procedure of replacing his abdominal organs and attempting to cover them with what remained of his skin the surgeon presiding stated repeatedly that it should not be medically possible for the patients to still be alive. One terrified nurse assisting the surgery stated that she had seen the patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. <laughs> How creepy yeah. would that be? <laughs> it, it is a, you can't really get much more creepy than that, honestly. <laughs> It's almost like they're like you know in a euphoric you know sense of pleasure at that mm -hmm. point you know mm -hmm. they're cenobited yeah. up yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's true mm, they yeah. went to they went they went to uh, the, pleasure land of uh yeah to the where, uh, world yeah. yeah where our good okay. friend Pinhead that's, resides that's what happened when they when they couldn't see anything then the walls opened up and the blue <laughs> light came in and then What's thou? <laughs> you opened it, we came. <laughs> when the angels, <laughs> demons, Russian sleep experiments. <laughs> to some. Uh, when the surgery ended, the subject looked at the surgeon and began to wheeze loudly, attempting to talk while struggling. Assuming this must be something of the drastic importance, the surgeon had a pen and pad fetched so the patient could write his message. It was simple. Keep cutting. <laughs> well, we know someone's gotten enjoyment for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's creepy. The other two test subjects were given the same surgery, both without anesthetic as well. Although they had been injected with a paralytic for the duration of the operation. The surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the patients laugh continuously once paralyzed the subject could only follow the attending researchers with their eyes the paralytic cleared their system in an abnormally short period of time and they were soon trying to escape their bonds the moment they could speak they were again asking for the stimulant gas the researchers tried asking why had they injured themselves why had they ripped out their own guts? Why they wanted to be given the gas again? Only one response was given. I must remain awake. Mm. Why do they want to be awake? Yeah, well, the I must remain awake is that... It's is, almost like yeah. they, they were able to see maybe the real existence of what our you know our plane of existence or our earth you know really maybe is because you know maybe there's like that whole idea of you know being stuck in a stimulation or it's not stimulation mm. simulation <laughs> well Ooh. they're stuck in a simulation but being stuck in a simulation and maybe being awake so long they're able to break that whole whole code of you know maybe put us to sleep you know, and um, they were able to see so much. It oh, kind of yeah. reminds me of that film, uh, what's it called? Uh, Dark City, mm -hmm. where they put the people to sleep and then, like, the people would come and they, like, would switch everything around and for the, uh, for like, you know, residents of the town for when they would wake up, you know, there'd be different things that would happen. Mm. Kind of reminds me of that idea. Okay. I mean, yeah, with the whole, like, the simulation idea. It's like when they couldn't watch them and stuff, they were, uh, their uh, programming was rewritten, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, Which would lead to like the whole idea of the soul being, you know, empowered and imbued. Mm -hmm. And they're not, a they're able to do these supernatural things because they know that it's not real, you know, or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. It's a thought. 
Yeah. And it's it's like um, I re I've read like you know over the years I don't know how true this is it's just that you know the reason why we're not as strong as any other like you know apes and prime apes in the uh, animal kingdom is because part of our brain uh, uses it to keep us from being you know savages and keeps us civil and if mm -hmm. we were able to you know almost break that you know thought we'd be as strong as other you know mammals and other primates mm. um, so i wonder if this is like something that you know is like kind of building on that idea of um they've almost lost like their you know civilization you know being like a civilized human and now they're able to access that almost you know extra strength that you know our muscles are able to like give out yeah that's interesting Mm -hmm. Um, almost as interesting as the fact that all three subjects restraints <laughs> were reinforced and they were placed back into the chamber awaiting determination as to what should be done with them the researchers facing the wrath of the military benefactors for having failed the stated goals of their project considered euthanizing the surviving subjects the commanding officer, an ex-KGB, instead, uh, instead saw potential and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. The researchers strongly objected, but were overruled. Oh, shit. Here we go. Strongly <laughs> objected. Um cool. In preparation for being sealed in the chamber again, the subjects were connected to an EEG monitor and had their restraints padded for long-term confinement. To everyone's surprise, all three stopped struggling the moment it was let slip that they were going back on the gas. It was obvious that, at this point, all three were putting up a great struggle to stay awake. One of the subjects that could speak was humming loudly and continuously. The mute subject was straining his legs against the leather bonds with all his might, first left, then right, then left again for something to focus on. The remaining subject was holding his head off his pillow and blinking rapidly. Having been the first to be wired to the EEG machine, most of the researchers were monitoring his brain waves in surprise. They were normal most of the time, but sometimes flatlined inexplicably. It looked as if he were repeatedly suffering brain death before returning to normal. As they focused on paper scrolling out of the brainwave monitor, only one nurse saw the man's eyes slip shut at the same moment his head hit the pillow. His brainwaves immediately changed to that of deep sleep, then flattened for the last time as his heart simultaneously stopped. Mm. Oh. So it's like... It wasn't like it took they took too long to almost put the gas back on, so they were mm. like their body started to give out on them in a sense. You know? Yeah, it was like they uh they stopped fighting. Yeah. And so then it was like just the act of not fighting made them fall asleep and die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got like comfortable with like you know, the idea of the gas being turned on and their you know Yeah. So They're do you bombed. think as far as the uh, not wanting to sleep, is that because of fear or because of some kind of goal? Mm. Mm. I think it's almost, it's almost like in a sense when they're going through that surgery and, you know, they want to be cut more. I feel like them being awake was almost like a euphoric you know existence for them at that point Ooh. you know they've they've hit this point where you know they feel nothing but pleasure because they've been you know put through so much torture at that point it's almost like you know what we were talking about earlier the whole hellraiser thing where pleasure and pain is Bro. one ideal now this is a better hellraiser sequel than like 90% of the Hellraiser <laughs> That is true. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe that could be the title of the... <laughs> title of the week. The best yeah. Hellraiser sequel. <laughs> you never heard about. <laughs> yeah, that would be such a troll. That you never heard about that literally everybody heard about. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but you know, it, it, it the way that you know it's playing out is almost in a sense, like you said, it could be a Hellraiser sequel. You know, mm-hmm. with like you know almost a uh, Pinhead coming in and you know taking them with them, and that's why they're dying. You know, he's taking their soul with them, so the body's dying out in our world. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Well, interesting. The only remaining subject that could speak started screaming to be sealed in now. His brainwaves showed the same flat lines as the one who had just died from falling asleep. The commander gave the order to seal the chamber with both subjects alive, or inside, as well as three researchers. Really? One of them named three immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point blank between the eyes, then turned the gun on the mute subject and blew out his his brains as well. Oof. He pointed his gun at the remaining subject, still restrained to a bed as the remaining members of the medical and research team fled the room. I won't be locked in here with these things, not with you. He screamed at the at the man strapped to the table. What are you? He demanded. I must know. The subject smiled. Have you forgotten so easily? The subject said. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. The researcher paused, then aimed at the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined as the subject weakly choked out, so nearly free. Original author unknown, originally uploaded on August 16th, 2010. Ooh. Bum, bum, bum. 14 years ago. That's crazy. Hey. Mm. So wow. the whole so... idea is that they became like almost a pure form of like our almost like our inner madness and inner inner desires mm-hmm. it seems like all all yeah. in one and you know and the gas was what was keeping them you know exploring that whole idea mm-hmm. the whole feeling what i getting. what I, I really like about that line is the when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread mm-hmm. so it's almost like you know, like it's, let's it's say... like your shadow, right? Like your shadow is like constantly within you, and then, and then if you get weak enough, it can take over. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. It's hmm. Yeah, it's like the the different plane of existence that is sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, your consciousness goes to the nocturnal haven, and this these are entities that can't go there mm-hmm. they're stuck in this plane and they, yeah that's that's interesting yeah, yeah that's why this one was one of my favorites because it, it doesn't go too like there's some pretty insane things that happen but it doesn't go too far into the hokey it keeps it pretty uh pretty restrained the mm-hmm. all the way through and and yeah makes it kind of like a, a clinical chilling tale I think madness. it just doesn't try to do too much with what, you know, it sets out to do. Right. Right. And it doesn't try to like, you know, try to make you, you know, almost like believe this is what's happening. It like gives you like almost like annotated like facts about what happened that, mm-hmm. you know, that time and doesn't try to like lead you with too much detail of what like what really really happened. It leaves a little bit you know, in your mind of what really is going on, but it gives you just enough where you're like, oh, this could be true. This could just be someone that just like is, you know, remembering this and giving out like mm-hmm. just a little bit of what they remembered. Mm-hmm. And then like, I think the whole idea of with that picture, it totally sells the whole idea of yeah. the Russian sleep experiment. Yeah. You know, you don't need anything it's something else. That you tell that is, you know, almost human. But there's something about it that's been, like, you know, transformed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
yeah it, it, i think i think brandon he said earlier i think it does kind of ride that uncanny valley line where it's it looks real enough but it's not so real that it becomes um disgusting to look at like it's, yeah. it's not too gory but it's 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 yeah. off enough to be disturbing yeah, because it, it's yeah. almost like at, at first glance, if if you're like told this is a true story and you see the, you know the article mm-hmm, picture mm-hmm. and you're like, wait, what is that real? Like, is that true? Like, yeah. whoa, that looks so creepy. And you look into it more, and then you're like, oh, okay, it's not. But it's it's enough for that first glance that you could believe it. Yeah. 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 Well, that was a uh, Rick. That's your first creepy pasta you said. Yep. That's a good very, one. Very that's a good first... one to start with. Yeah. It's a pretty good yeah, one. You know. And I feel like, you know, there's probably so many more that, you know, maybe our audience might push us to go, you know, read and maybe this might be a new, you know, book that we might open up and might, you know, delve into a little bit more and see what's in there. So mm. Cool. If any of you out there know of any good ones or any of them you would like me to react to, especially since I haven't read any or, you know, <laughs> yeah. known of any. I know Brandon has read a few and I know Josiah has, you know, read a few more than that, but I've read absolutely none. This is yeah. the very, very mm-hmm. first one. So if, if, you know, if you can give us any that are like any close to the quality of this, I'd be happy to read it with, you know, with you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. It sounds great. Uh, please give us suggestions, uh, like, and subscribe comment on the videos. Please watch our main podcast episodes and yeah, we're going to start doing more readings and more reactions. Uh, but, uh, until then, you know, uh, sleep well tonight. Oh, I will <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have a little experiment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>